What's up, TG? This is something I've been meaning to get around to for a while now, but only now I've finally gotten around to doing it. I want to tell you the story, the tale of Autismo. Stop me if you heard this one before. Here's how it goes. My autistic as fuck friend, who is otherwise super cool, wanted to learn how to play PNP RPGs, so I offered to let him join my current Death Watch group. He showed up a few hours before the session, and we rolled him a super smart arbiter who's been kicked off the force for obsessing over a certain unsolved case, which, conveniently, tied into my ongoing plot. As the game time draws nearer, he starts to get really nervous. He's never met any of the other players before. My first player knocks on the door and he totally freaks out. He says he's going to go play TOR on his laptop in the other room for a while and maybe join in later. I get a little miffed because he does this a lot asking me to help him become more social and then wimping out at the last second. But I say okay. People show up excited and talking about the session, left off on a huge cliffhanger last week, and they're raring to go, and I forget to mention, Autismo is here. The session starts with the PCs raiding a heretic compound, pretty standard fare. They're looking for clues on the current case, and succeed in finding the cogitator files they need. Then I get a text. Tell the adept it looks like someone's accessed the files recently. It's from Autismo. Apparently, he can hear us, as only a single closed door separates the two rooms. Okay, sure, whatever. The files would effectively tell Autismo everything the PCs already know, so if he does join in, it'll bring him up to speed without any hand-waving. I tell the adept, and then carry on with the session. Pretty shortly afterwards, the PCs come across another murder scene, which they still think is the work of this cult they're trying to track down. I've mentioned several times that the cult members have an eclipse symbol tattooed on their palms, basically just a black circle overlapping a white one. And in passing, mentioned that the body appears tattooed, hoping somebody would catch on. They poke around the room a lot, but never examine the body, besides confirming that they died from the shot to the back of the head. I get another text from Altismo. Could I see into the room from the building across the street, with my magnoculars? Me? Sure. Are you trying to hide? Autismo? No, but I've prepared to duck away if they look in my direction. Can you roll to see if I can hack into their Vox frequency? I've got tech use trained. You succeed. What now? What's the guardsman's phone number? So I text him the number, curious as to what he is up to. Also, can you put your phone on speaker and put it under the table or something? It's hard to hear sometimes. Okay... A few minutes later, the guardsman player gets a text that simply says, Look at the hands. Obviously, he doesn't have Autismo's number, so he has no idea where it came from. I'm talking to another player, and it is pretty obvious it wasn't me. And he has the numbers of the rest of the players. The group talks about it for a minute, and then the guardsman says, I guess I look at the corpse's hands. A breakthrough. And they realize, thanks to some pics the adept took of the other bodies, that all of them haven't been victims of the cult, but in fact, cult members. This is a huge turning point in the investigation. The guardsman texts Voxes, the mysterious person back, asking who he is, where he is, how he can see them, what he knows, basically everything. Autismo just texts back, I am Overwatch. The players, of course, still have no idea what's going on, but move on with the investigation, assuming it's just some clever DMing on my part. The session continues. Autismo IMs me occasionally for rule clarifications or to verify if his current action is okay. He's following a parallel investigation that the PCs have already explored a few weeks ago, so I've already got all my notes on it. Basically, he sends messages to the guardsmen about theory, suggestion on causes of actions, etc. Sometimes the players take his advice. Sometimes they don't. But with all my typing, they're now assuming I'm just texting them from Google Talk or something. In a coincidence that I couldn't have planned better if I had tried, both Autismo and the rest of the group end up at the same place at, roughly, close enough for me to hand wave it, the same time, but from totally opposite directions. The group breaking in through the sewers and Autismo sneaking in through the roof. Autismo's been off the speaker for a while, so he doesn't really know what's going on, and he stopped texting the group too. The group moves faster than he does, making their way through a decent number of enemies and running into the heretic leader, who is, surprise surprise, it's a follower of Zeech, whose master plan is getting ruined because he underestimated humanity or whatever, but who is still damn powerful. The scum and the adept go down pretty quick, and the tech priest gets scared stupid and starts fleeing, leaving just the guardsman who's blasting away from cover. At this point, Autismo has reached the same area from a totally different direction. I describe the scene, he whips out his shotgun and charges the heretic leader, unloading shells at point blank. 
a few good rolls but also a few bad, but he still staggers and distracts the follower. He then takes a bolt around to the leg and loses it, falls down and starts bleeding out. The guardsman, seeing his chance, charges the follower, but he misses his shots, and Ortizmo's turn rolls around again. He fires off another blast from his shotgun, crits, and turns the follower's head into a nice red mist, and then continues dying. The guardsman reaches him and starts bandaging his wounds, and asks the mysterious interloper who he is. Ortizmo opens the door and says, I am Overwatch. My face when Ortizmo has never done this anything this spontaneous in his life. My group's face when they thought I planned the whole thing. Ortizmo's face when everyone thinks he's did really good and invite him back next week. And that is the tale of Ortizmo. This may only be the beginning of his story, and ours. But only time will tell what's on the next page. Maybe I'll see you there. Maybe. <laughs>